28 not out. Sponsored by Shepherd Neen. Proud supporters of cricket in Essex. Sly and a family stone there, everyday people, which uh, younger listeners might remember was uh, uh, sampled or covered by Arrested Development. It's sampled. Huh? Sampled. It was sampled, wasn't it? Yeah. And everyone mixes up Arrested Development yeah. with Black Eyed Peas, and it's all a bit of a mishmash. But anyway... Uh, that was Sly and the Family Stone. That was chosen by our next guest, um, one of the most familiar voices on the radio and on the television, Sky and TMS commentator, Charles Dagnall. Charles, welcome along to 98 Day Out. Absolute pleasure to be here. How's your evening? Uh, we're not doing too bad at all. Uh, it's, one, it's nice, and I don't know what the weather's like where you are, it's, it's Bit, bit wet and miserable here. Yeah, it's properly miserable. If the test match was happening in Market Harbour, it uh, wouldn't have got any play in whatsoever. <laughs> so uh, luckily that venue was ruled out uh, and they decided to go somewhere a little bit uh, where, where they've had some had some play. So it's all good. But I was enjoying listening to a bit of Sly Stone. What a good choice by me, Indeed. if I do say so myself. We, we noticed you, you were a one-time radio DJ too as well, wasn't you? I was, yeah. Goodness me, when I first started back in in radio when I'd retired. In fact, I'd started before I'd retired uh, playing for, for Leicestershire. Um, I was actually working on, on local radio, on BBC Radio Leicester, and, and whilst I was in the winter times. Because um, I used to go away and, and play in Australia and New Zealand and all of that, and I'd sort of got tired of doing that. I wanted to give the body a rest. So started working and learning the, the industry and the trade um, in the winter times, all sort of, you know, covering shifts and, and getting up at the stupid times in the morning to, to go and uh, watch and learn and, uh, and see how everything worked. Uh, and then as soon as I realised that I, I couldn't play anymore due to injury, I, I sort of slid into, uh, in, into that. And believe it or not, instead of working on the sports department, uh, they, they, gave me the, they gave me a slot from 9 till 12 on a Saturday morning. <laughs> so I was, I was a sort of proper de-jock, uh, just spinning the hits and, uh, and, and sort of competitions and prizes and guests and phone-ins and all of that sort of stuff. But it was actually the music I enjoyed spinning. And, and truth to tell, we used to have a, a set list on, on local radio, which was given to you. You had sort of, I don't know, 10, 12 tracks an hour. And, and they were given to you. They just were computer-generated and... and you know, you, you got into the studio, and I kept. I got there Saturday morning. Now on a Saturday morning, you want to be. You're in a good mood. It's the weekend. You've got chores to do. You, you may be going to a bit of sport later on in the day, or or whatever it may. Taking the kids to a club, or whatever it might be. You know, cleaning the house, etc. And and I looked at the the playlists on a Saturday morning, and just went, "This is awful. This music. <laughs> There's rubbish. no Mark Butcher." Exactly. There's no Mark Butcher on the playlist. How on earth can anybody survive without having having at least two or three songs per hour from Bush? <laughs> anyway, um, I then so I got I kept getting into trouble every week by throwing out the music that was given to me and then playing stuff that that I wanted to play. Um, and as it turned out, it, it went quite well. You know, listening figures were pretty reasonable. You know, I probably doubled them to about four, and and. No, it was, um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, so yeah, I would make up really, really rubbish segments in my nine till twelve slot uh, to excuse the music that I was playing. Uh, so it was. Uh, so yes, I had I had a bit of that, and I loved it. I actually miss it hugely. Uh, just going out and, and that feeling of uh, being in the car or at home, and that that feeling. And you guys will know. Mm. You know, when you hear on the radio where you get that feeling of, God, I've not heard that in ages. Yeah. What a great song that was. Yeah. Yeah. And I wanted to keep do doing that. So anyway, that's, that's past, uh, past history of radio. But yes, yeah, done, uh, done some of that in, in my time. But yeah. Well, is it past though? Because I'm just sort of rooting around doing a bit of research tonight because, you know, I like to try and make out that I'm at least trying a little Thanks bit. Thanks for making the effort. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I came across a really good video, actually, of um, a certain Burnley man on bass... Um, a very super talented young lady on drums called Ebony Rainsford Brent. Oh, God. And Henry Moran playing a very mean lead blues guitar. Uh, and it, it actually looked and sounded quite good. Well, you can take your surprise out of your voice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you mean. It was, it was funny, you know what? Myself and uh, it all really started. So I... I 
I'm from quite a musical family. Uh, so my brothers uh, and sister, all very musical. And then there was, they, they all sort of uh, came in one bunch uh, year after year. And then there was a gap of five years and then me. And so I didn't really get into the music side. Always had music around because of them. But I was much more on my own. And so I went down a, a sort of more sporting route. But um, my brother, John, is a session musician and, and um, you know, he plays drums and bass and guitar and keys, all to the highest standards. One of those bugs that you actually really hate uh, <laughs> because, because of the talent. My, my eldest brother has played in rock bands uh, throughout his life and my sister was, was very good pianist and singer as well. Um, and, and actually, my, my, you know, further, my further on family was uh, uh, very musical as well. And I thought, you know what, I've loved it my entire life. I was kicking around playing bass guitar but not really in, in any sort of serious nature and then a couple of years ago i went to watch chic and now uh, rogers uh, yeah. in uh, in leicestershire they were playing at beaver castle and i was watching a guy called jerry barnes uh, who plays bass and i thought i want to do this i want i, I want to i want to sound like this guy <laughs> um and so i actually started really focusing on playing and started getting lessons and, and i'm going through my grades at the moment uh, and I'm currently uh, on working on my grade five bass. Henry is a, a super lead guitarist, and, and, and Ebony's been working on her drums for quite some time. So every now and again, we sort of get uh, you know WhatsApp messages and say, "Oh, do you fancy it? Well, you've got an hour here or two hours there," and we get together and uh, and just sort of jam it out and work on a few songs. It's great that of guitar, bass, drums, so we sound band-like. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that particular one you heard was us actually grooving to um, 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover. <laughs> uh, Paul Simon's great track with that Steve Gadd uh, drum line. Uh, and, uh, and, yeah, so we were just grooving on there. So we only, we had to sift through, let me tell you, we had to sift through hours and hours and hours of footage that we'd recorded to get the 30 seconds that we actually <laughs> thought we sounded all right. You could so, have chosen uh, 50 but, ways to lose your wicket. Yes. Well, goodness me, I could tell you all of those. I probably had them. <laughs> uh, happened to me uh, during my career. But no, it was great. It, it's great when you can actually switch off from your job and do something that you that you adore doing. And, and um, you know, myself and Henry were going to put on a rock show uh, this this Ooh. summer it was supposed to be July the thirty first. We were we were booked the hundred club down in Soho in London. Oh, wow. Um and we'd started selling tickets and, and all of the proceeds were going to the Teenage Cancer Trust. Oh, good cause. Um and we'd you know, we were gonna put on a real you know, we were gonna go all in, spandex and, and you know <laughs> all, all of that. And some of the photos you can they're, they're online somewhere, but but Unfortunately, we've had to postpone it because of what's going on at the moment. And so we're going to be redoing it, though. We're going to redo it next year. Um, so a proper rock show, classic rock, you know, sort of ACDC and Queen and, and Van Halen and all of that. And, um, and and I've got my my brother's actually coming to play drums for us. We've got two of his mates who are going to be the backing band. So, uh, you know, f proper session musicians backing us up. Uh, and basically what me and Henry thought was that we'd turn us down and them up, and that would sound <laughs> really good. Uh, so, And yeah, a couple of special guests as well, which we're going to not ad advertise. We're going to just pull them out on the night. Um, but uh, but yeah, our hope is that we can redo it uh, next year and, and raise hopefully £10,000, pounds for Teenage oh, Cancer. That'll be excellent. We'll definitely have to come along for that. You, said you, you will. You'll have to buy your tickets. Though, yeah, we will. We will. You said Every you were learning... Every goes to them. <laughs> have you... Um, so I, I had a go learning the bass a few years ago and the, the, the Beaches Brook of bass playing for me was slap bass. Yes. A la Mark King. How have you got on with that? Uh, well, funnily enough, it's one of the things that I always play when I'm on my own, just having a bit of a, a, a muck around and, and, and try it, because you, 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 you're dead right. Marking, and that's one of the reasons why I chose Everyday People by Sly Stone, because the bassist on there, one of my heroes, Larry Graham, uh, and that was the first song ever, really, to, to um, incorporate slap bass. The godfather of slap bass was Larry Graham. Yeah. Um, and even though he is truly ridiculous as a musician that bass line in that song is just one note he plays one note throughout the entire song he plays a g um and he but he just slaps on it and it was the first time and then he incorporated it into other songs like thank you for letting me be myself again and, and that was a very distinctive slap bass line and it's been taken on 
and on through uh, bass players throughout the course of history. From but but it was Larry that started it. So I am um, I would say I'm poor. <laughs> um, uh, poor to average, uh, and hoping to get to average by the end of grade five. But that's uh, that's uh, you always try it because you want to think that you're Mark King or Larry Graham or, or Victor Bo- Wooten Bootsy or Collins. <laughs> Bootsy Collins. Exactly. <laughs> These are the people that you want to pretend you are when actually sounding horrific at home. So you're on your Saturday morning um, nine till twelve uh, radio gig. Um, how does that? transform into cricket commentary and 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 your sort of uh, fantastic ascent uh, to the to the tms uh, and and sky and all the rest of it what well it, it, it's, it's i mean it's a, a fairly lengthy story so i'll try and condense it for for, for you and your listeners um i started on radio and i said yes i did do sports bulletins and sport was always the thing that really sort of um uh, was was the thing that i loved talking about whether it be cricket in the main but but round leicester it's a very um it, it's not a typical city because you have top level rugby top level football top level cricket in yeah. a very small area so um plus you have the basketball team the leicester riders who played in the top league the leicester ladies hockey uh, was in the top league the, and loughborough university not too far back so lots of olympic um athletes were trained there and so it was a hotbed really of sport so whatever your chosen sport there was plenty to get your teeth stuck into so i not only did the saturday morning programs but i would still do sports shifts you know reading the news bulletins and sports bulletins and that sort of thing and then i I graduated to to doing drive time radio and and also bits of breakfast and that sort of things um but sport was always my first love i did news and current affairs on the drive time program plus an hour of sport and that was the hour that really i i, I loved yeah i uh, loved doing interested in current affairs absolutely and, and that was it was great fun but not really where my heart lay but at Leicester, at radio leicester at the time they didn't have a cricket commentator really of they had football commentators rugby commentators but not a a, a distinct cricket commentator well it was always my um aspiration after listening to test match special and, and watching uh, bbc cricket on when it was on tv then channel four and and you know subsequently sky to to, to be talking about cricket and so i was trained that you know I, i'm i'm a big believer in, in actually training for the radio i was trained uh, by a gentleman called john shaw who wouldn't actually allow me on air until he thought i was ready so so i spent a good two years training uh, using my voice and, and um, you know, the ability to, to convey what you're trying to, to describe on the radio. Um, and, and and when the summer came and, and critic, there was cricket commentary to be done, I was there. I was, you know, I was kind of known in the area as well for, for, from, um, you know, being a professional cricketer. So there was that sort of credibility to it as well. But I've never really done a great deal. Um, but obviously, with the more experience you had behind the microphone, the, the, the better you get at it. Um, but I think also the other aspect was that while I was playing, I was um, rather known for being a decent bowler. I was known for being a, a you know a bit of a I hate to say it, but a bit of a character, which basically people say <laughs> when you're not very good at something. <laughs> um, so so instead of being a decent cricketer, oh, he's a character that guy. Because yeah, he can't bowl a hoop downhill, but he's. Um, uh, you know, he's, he's he's quite a good character. And, and, and so your personality, you've got a, an opportunity to sort of display your personality a little bit when, with cricket. Um, and so that's how it started. TMS picked that up after I'd done sort of two or three or four years of of, um, of radio commentary for Radio Leicester. Uh, they liked what I did, and, and the rest is history. And then from there, um, obviously, you know, when TMS came calling, I was, I mean, I was just blown away. I, I really was. Yeah. And, and, you know, I never got to play for England. I wasn't good enough, you know, on, on the field. But off the field, you know, getting picked to be a ball-by-ball commentator uh, for TMS is, is a similar kind of feeling. Mm. Um, and, it, and so it was for when Sky came calling about three years ago, um, which is unusual. You know, they, they don't usually sort of... Um, take people who've done, done BBC Radio um, uh, on, but I was just thoroughly delighted, and people like David Lloyd and Ian Ward um, sort of, you know, championing me in that respect, and, and I have adored it, and again, that was like being 
selected for England as well. So from a from a broadcast standpoint, I'm, I'm very blessed. There's been a lot of years of of bad radio that I've done <laughs> <laughs> get me into the position, but but no, it's um. It's always a thrill uh, to do any cricket. You could be thinking, you know, it's, it's Derbyshire versus Glamorgan. It's seven o'clock in the evening. It's eleven degrees. There's mizzle in the <laughs> air, and, and you know what? Love it. Absolutely. Oh, it comes across. It. it really does come across. And, and you know, how can you not? Um, it's you know, you could be stuck behind a desk, or you could be doing a variety of different jobs. I feel most blessed uh, to uh, to do what I do, and and, and that's how it has. Continued. I hope it does continue. Yeah, or, I'm or, sure or, it will. Before, before I get found out, anyway. Yeah. Now, so, uh, so, yeah. Now, you're not in the bubble at the moment, are you? But uh, no, are there plans the to room. Are there plans to join the bubble? Are you going to be um, yes. commentating over the summer? Yep, uh, looking forward to it immensely. So, I think over the course of... Um, uh, as m- I mean, I adore all cricket. I don't care what uh, the game is and what the format is. There are those who are... Um, you know, vehement test match cricket lovers and, and to hell with any of the other shorter forms. It's, it's not cricket in their eyes. I, I don't believe that. I'm, mm. I'm not one of those. I'll take cricket in any form it comes. Um, and, I, and I've loved recently, you know, over the last, well, since 2012, really, I've covered a lot of women's cricket and I've just, I've, I've, I've loved it. it it's been, a real eye opener for for me to get stuck in um, and and broadcast a different game. It's the same game, but it's a different game. And to it, to um, understand it, to I reveled in it. I've absolutely loved it. Um, yeah, you know, the girls are brilliant. They're brilliant with us. They're, they're fabulous uh, sportswomen, and they um, and, and I've, I've loved commentating. And it's taken me to. to all four corners of the globe of which again i'm i'm hugely blessed to have done um this first uh, but 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 overall i think you know i've made more of a name in in one day cricket in white day in white yeah. ball cricket especially when it gets to be in a close game that's the one where you know i like to be the guy i like to be the guy closing the game out i know what i'm looking for this comes back from playing i know where I'm looking for, for bowlers, for fielders, for, for, for batsmen as well. Um, so I like to think I'm across the game in, in those real crucial moments. I am, and, and like to think, I may not, we all get it wrong from time to time, but like to think that, I'm, that I'm, um, my mind is, is swift of thought to pick up on what, what's going on at that moment. So it's a real thrill for me, for my first work of the summer, to be given... Uh, men's international cricket on Sky. Um, it's, it's my first time that I'll have done international cricket for Sky TV. Uh, so I'm doing the England-Ireland one-day international, oh, uh, uh, which is down at the Aegeus Bowl. So I'll join the bubble uh, <laughs> in, in uh, the back end of July. But I'm, I, you know, I was, I was thrilled. I really was, guys. I was just taken aback when, when. Uh, the Sky, you know, editor, the the, um, the Sky crew who produced the Brian Henderson gave us a ring and sort of said, "Look, this is what you're going to be doing." And I had to catch my breath uh, because I was so excited about it. And you know, um, to do international cricket, you know, on the television is the next step for us. And 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 I'm thoroughly thrilled. Um, you know, he could have turned around and said, "You're going to Derby versus Glamour." I'd have been just a, a thrill. But you know, you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. um, I remember my TMS. One day international debut. Remember my TMS Test match debut, and, and now hope I'll remember my my Sky international debut. So I've got that coming up, uh, which I'm really looking forward to uh, down in Southampton. Uh, and then hopefully when they get organised, and I've, I've not seen anything um, of the dates, so excuse me if they're, they're out. Uh, but no, nothing, nothing also either. I think the women's internationals will be um, will be named, and, and they will you know, be announced as to when they're happening and fingers crossed they'll get covered. And also with county cricket, how much can be done? I don't know. That's above my pay grade. Um, you know, they've got to see how the bubble would work in in, uh, in county cricket and how best they can cover it and if they can cover it due to the restrictions because of COVID-19. Mm. Um, but, you know, at, at this moment in time, <laughs> I've, been, I've been sat on my backside for four months. <laughs> 
So uh, I'll take anything. You're raring um, to go. At, at this moment, yes. Uh, my, my school teaching uh, days, I think, are over uh, after doing it for three months with my daughter <laughs> uh, whilst lockdown was happening. Um, and also I had a, an operation in March to... Um, uh, to have a, a full knee replacement as well, so I've actually been Ooh. able to to get that um, recovered nicely too. Uh, to a, you know, still got a long way to go, but at least I've not had to uh, to be stood on my feet for for twelve hours whilst uh, whilst recovering from that. So yeah, I am raring to go, raring. So more importantly, where are you going for your birthday tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just sticking around, uh, sticking around here. Um, I, there's uh, nothing better than uh, getting, uh, than having family. So my daughter and my girlfriend will be uh, uh, will be uh, around, and uh, I'll, it'll probably be me that's cooking. Um, but uh, but yeah, just a, a very quiet barbecue. One doesn't like to advertise one's birthday <laughs> at uh, this time of life, as I'm sure you can both understand. Yeah, we, I think uh, we've both got a few years on you, so that yeah. too much. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yes, it's uh, it's going to be a, a very nice quiet affair, and um, uh, yeah, it's still going to know, knowing that. With this work coming up, I think one has to be uh, just a little bit more careful um, and uh, and take these things pretty seriously. But uh, but no, very much uh, very much looking forward to the celebration. Brilliant. Charles, thank you very much for joining us. Absolutely, Absolutely pleasure. Time, guys. Happy birthday for tomorrow. Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you on our screens very shortly covering the foot yeah, the football, the cricket <laughs> even. I'll cover the football if you want me to. Well, you, you want the Burnley? <laughs> yeah. So uh, keep well, and uh, hopefully we'll all catch up soon. Oh, that's right! You're all Hammers fans, that way. No, well, I'm a Spurs fan. I've got it on. Oh, in, I, I've got I'm it on Paris. in the background. So, uh, well, well, just to endear myself to any happy Hammers listening, congratulations on your defeat by Burnley. <laughs> that's in you, we, we, we both enjoyed it. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers! Cheers! Thank boys. you very much indeed. Thanks a lot. Good to talk to you. Cheers.